Photographers are like kittens who are allergic to cat milk. They usually don't make it past the year seven. They often have rashes on their bellies. And they they take bad pictures. It doesn't mean if five of them came to me for help, I'd refuse. Come on. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we're on the Sony a7S III pre-firmware, of course. Zeiss 55 mil Tony 1.8 at 2.8. The discipline. I don't have a tube light here. That would look ridiculous. It would create shadows on my face every time I moved my hands, and that would be stupid. I have a microphone hidden out of shot. Casey, can you help? I'm between buying the Pocket 3 or the Sony RX 107. We'll be shooting a vlog from inside my truck and doing some B-roll from the trucks I drive. How... Are the loads are done, so on. please help me. Feelings for your mom passing. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Love those. When a normal person's mom dies, they get a couple condolences for a week, and then they move on. When a YouTuber's mom dies for years, like, oh, sorry about your mom. It's like, yep, good times. Yeah, she's already like a two-year-old baby now in some other world. So you want to buy Marcus Pick's favorite camera. Just because he's using it doesn't mean anyone else should. It's tiny, it's fun, long zoom range, do you need that? 200 mil. Let's not forget the price here, 1298 versus 519 of the pocket. It's just, it's very different uses, like 20 mil only versus 24 to 200. Do you need that zoom range? Because if you do, then the choice is obvious, not the pocket three. Very limited in what it does, but it's gonna be more stable if you're holding it but if you're in a truck and you're like suction cupping your shit to a glass window that I hope an eagle cracks, then nips and feeds off your suction cup glue. I think the Pocket 3 is probably going to be better, but honestly, like I would prefer having an actual camera. I think I would want that. 960 frames per second slow-mo it does, a little burst. It's just for hand-holding and walking, that stave is utter trash. If Sony would just put everything into it, just IBIS and lens stave, plus a 10% digital crop to smooth out the kinks in like a 15 to 35 type of lens, Zeiss, of course, then you'd have something. But like right now, their 24 mil ends up being a 28 or 30 with the crop, and it's not that stable, and like, what are we doing? I would love to have a Sony ZV-2 with a 15 to 35, but even if they made that, they would remove all the fun slow-mo. For some reason, it's gone in all the recent cameras. All the old ones could do fun-ass 960 frames. It was terrible resolution, but you should be improving it, not just giving up. Like, oh no, it's soft. Ah, run, remove it from our cameras. I'll remove your pants. Hi Casey, did you know that Canon 600 and 800 mil Tony 11 lenses have bigger AF box on newer bodies like the R8 and R6? Agree, it's too many Tonys, but maybe worth a try? Super lightweight and crazy reach? No. That lens, it was okay, but like it wasn't stable at all on the Canon EOS R. So like it was super shaky, unless you have IBIS, don't even bother with Canon. So. IBIS and lens stabe working together is somewhat respectable. It wasn't great either. I remember trying the R5 with that lens, I think. And it was even the 100 to 500, it's pretty stable, but like still kind of jerky when you're moving around. It wasn't great. Nikon's better. If you're looking for wildlife, why are you looking at Canon? Why are you telling me to look at Canon? Those lenses are budget and on my R8, even if it had an autofocus thing bigger, Still gonna be too shaky. The Canon R8 has really good digital stave for just walking handheld for wide lenses, but on telephoto that becomes unusable. It's not even close to good, so you're out of luck. I just ruined my shot by adding a Glimmer Glass 3 filter. I made the shadows irresistible. Now, huh? Little side by side. Glimmer Glass, huh? versus the non guy, more pop without the filter. But this is softer and more dynamic range, kind of bloomy highlights. 
I have a major question, and if anyone has the answer, it's you. I'm getting into videography towards uh, recording mountain bike downhill videos. Fast pace, what camera would you go for? Make the type of footage. Montage swords of the woods, low light, slow-mo at times. I would really love your help. Side note, I have a budget around a thousand euro pounds for the body and maybe a lens. What do you mean, maybe a lens? You think you're getting a mirrorless for this gig? You're riding down a mountain on a bike. Someone's gonna die. Why do you have to ruin thousands of dollars of equipment? How would you stabilize it? It's an action cam you're looking at. What do you mean, and a lens? Oh, maybe a Sony ZV-E1 and Dynamic Stave. What? And a lens. You're looking at either Insta360 Ace Pro, because you said low light in the woods, that would be the ultimate. It has AI low light reduction modes versus DJI Action 4. It's not gonna be as good, but almost as good. But in low light, Ace Pro wins. And you could do AI bullshit in the forests for like, oh, I'm gonna do a little monkey scene and things are f swinging from trees and it's flashy and irritating and might give your grandmother a seizure if she watches it, but Ace Pro is probably your choice, even though they suck. But the, the shit thing about that, I prefer it for the scooter vlogs. If it's on a chest mount and I'm riding, I can do 8K and the 4K is sharper. And if it's cloudy or at night, I can do the AI noise reduction is like pure video. It's good. But I prefer the Action 4 because if I go on a scooter ride and then unclip quick and then vlog, the DJI will look good. The Insta360, you can't film a human face on it because the blotchiness, the red irritation. If you have a disease, Insta360 will find it and show it to your audience. If I have AIDS, I want that to be under wraps for now, okay? Insta360, it's a medical device. I just further ruined my video by opening up the toniature to maximum potential. Now I am egotistical and I wouldn't help an elderly lady across the street. Who looks better now? 1.8, oh no, the books are blurred. He doesn't read after all, they're all fake. Look, I've been to his house, they're not real books. 1.8 versus 2.8, 2.8 had dignity. A movie would shoot at 2.8, if not 5.6. I'm just throwing that out there. Was that your question? Best budget camera for indoor face recordings. Thank you for answering, Veggie Man. Filthy meat eating serial killer. Does it matter? Like you're indoors, get anything. Just start with whatever you have and then see if you can even handle your first hater comment that points out something that triggers you and you notice like, ah, oh, he's right. I'm not fit for this. Don't spend a lot of money in the beginning and it doesn't matter, no one cares. Focus on getting good audio. Not that I have a microphone right here. I almost sucked a black. So if I'm you, I'm using your phone. Do you have a phone? Can you borrow an action cam off your super athletic nephew? Can you get anything other than that? Like a Sony ZV-1F probably? No, that's, ow. That's contrast attack, don't even go there. But anything, literally any point and shoot, although those are like the most expensive cameras now for no reason. They're not vintage, they're just useless. Oh, they're super rare because no one wants them and nobody's making them anymore. You can't charge more money for that, it should be less. You know what's crazy about phones? Like say you did want that Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Decent one inch sensor, it's like, Frickin' $1,800 Canadian, who are you? It's a phone. It's like, oh, just use your phone. That costs more than my camera. What do you mean, just use your phone? But a used Sony ZV-1, you could get by. Can you find a Canon R10 or R50 maybe? Nikon Z30 had some autofocus issues. I do not recommend it anymore. I just, I don't know what the hell happened. It just started losing focus and I think it always did. And I don't know what the hell. RP, could you find one? Is that out of your, are we already out of your budget? I saw a Canon 6D Mark II on Amazon Warehouse. It was like 820 
Canadian plus tax. I almost pounced. I thought it would be funny to be able to mount my EF lenses natively to an actual DSLR and the 62 had good color science. It really did. Sony ZV-E10, that's disgusting. Fuji XS20, we're already out of your budget. Don't even borrow money from your aunt for that one. I'm on another camera now. I switched to Canon technology because the next question had Canon related issues. And now we're showing you little Zeiss first Canon 85mm 1.2. I stopped it down for the first time. 1.8, huh? To be fair, Zeiss 1.8. Oh, he had the glimmer glass. Oh, you piece of shit. Canon color science. How's the R8? Any overheating issues? No, but Canon is the biggest asshole. Every time I film, by the end of the video, especially if I make two, I get the overheat warning, which is like a bar of like eight bars and one ticks there. So in about three months, your camera might overheat. It's so irritating. You don't warn somebody, like, why is that giant flashing thing on the screen? It just makes me nervous. And it has no chance of ever overheating in its current state. But it just tells you, look, man, just look out. Imagine walking up to someone on the street and just, buddy, do not cross the street. That, like, in three blocks, there might be a car. I'm just saying, be careful. He's like, there's no car here though, like how would you know? Like when? Three blocks? What color is the car? Like who cares? Why are you warning me? So like no, it doesn't overheat, but I hardly use it for anything but this. Just like a talking head video, 4K, 24, 10 bit, it won't overheat. But eventually it will if you make like, I'm guessing five videos in a row. Long ones, like 20 minutes each. It might, it really might. But like if you're out there doing 4K 60, that might really start getting hot. Uh, as soon as you switch to that mode, it also warns you like 4K 60, this might overheat you. It's the most irritating thing because custom mode should be quick, like switching from slow mode to 4K 60. And then it's this box and you can't use your camera until you have pressed the shutter. It's a bunch of crap. But the R8 is glory hood. It's, you can't beat this thing for the price, the cheapest, smallest, lightest full frame setup for the most part. It's doing 4K 60, HD 180, 10 bits, autofocus and decent, maybe, sometimes, most of the time. I don't hear any autofocus noises. It's probably focused back there, but whatever. You don't need dignity to run a YouTube channel. The only downsides are the battery life, which when I'm in here, I'm always plugging that Kame TV V-mount battery into it or the frickin' Cook Tech. Those Cook Tech people. I think when I use that one, it drains faster. So maybe it's giving it more power, whereas the V-mount one will last like months on one charge, but it's like barely helping it at all. Canon, they're okay. They're, oh, that should be their slogan. We're okay. But could this camera use some help in a firmware update? Like, all I would like to see is custom white balance be normal. Canon's the dumbest at that. Like, just every single company, you have a box, you place a card, you press it, you're done. Whereas Canon's like, oh, get out of your mode, whatever mode you're in, just run away from that and take a picture then hold it there, keep it forever on your SD card, never delete it. And then go in, and then you go into the white balance menu of Canon, it's like, oh, it's not there. You don't change it there. You have to go into the other menu system and then you can choose custom white balance. And do you want to, okay. And then, oh, it doesn't work yet. And then you go into the other custom white balance menu and choose the custom part. What are we doing? The dumbest person on earth couldn't invent something worse than that. So like a white balance fix might be nice. More custom modes would be really nice. There should be a minimum of 10 in everything. 
even on the Sony, I have seven and that's not enough because like HD 240 in aperture priority is what I use a lot, but sometimes I want it manual and you can't change from aperture to manual in a custom mode. So like I would have to save a whole separate thing and then like a white balance 5,500 for outside. But in here I want custom and you can't custom white balance. So Canon only has two custom modes and that's utterly useless. There needs to be way more and a better battery, obviously. The Canon EOS R Mark II, maybe you got something, something new. 960 frames per second slow-mo, hopefully. It's coming sometime. By the way, if you wanted the mic out of the shot, you could hide it, but on the Canon, so hard to edit these files and then you double them up. Are you kidding yourself? You're dumb. So I can't even do that trick. I hate you, Canon. I'll leave. How you doing? Were you helped? You could have been. You subscribe huh? for more videos on Sailor Don't forget to film without this in the shot or nothing will work.